Welcome to a lesson on the complexity of algorithms. This lesson will broadly discuss the process of estimating execution time of an algorithm to determine its complexity, as well as compare the complexity of two algorithms. As an example, suppose that the execution time in seconds as a function of the number of inputs n for two algorithms is given by t sub one of n equals 60n squared plus seven n plus nine, and t sub two of n equals 60n squared plus 40. Which one is faster? For small n, there may be a difference in execution time, but for large ones, the execution time is very close. And that's because both functions are quadratic functions or degree two functions because of the n squareds. We can say the algorithms have the same speed. This can be expanded to include all algorithms whose execution time has n squared as its highest power. We see the execution time t sub one of n and t sub two of n is of order n squared and we can also state that t sub one of n is big theta of n squared, and so is t sub two of n. When given the execution times of algorithms as functions, we can use limits to compare the complexity of the algorithms. Where if the two functions are f of n and g of n, we take the limit as n approaches infinity of f of n divided by g of n. By doing this, there are three possible outcomes. If the limit is equal to zero, then the function in the denominator g of n has a higher order. We can state that f of n is big O of g of n, which indicates g of n is an upper bound of f of n. If the limit doesn't equal zero but is finite, then the two functions have the same order, and we can state that f of n is big theta of g of n, and f of n grows at the same rate of g of n. If the limit approaches infinity, then f of n the function in the numerator has a higher order, and we can state that f of n is big omega of g of n, indicating g of n is a lower bound of f of n. Going back to the previous example, let's determine the limit. We have the limit as n approaches infinity of t sub one of n divided by t sub two of n. As the limit approaches infinity, we're only concerned about the term with the highest degree in the numerator and denominator, which means we can drop the seven n plus nine in the numerator and we can drop the plus 40 in the denominator. This gives us the limit as n approaches infinity of 60n squared divided by 60n squared, which is equal to one. One is not zero and finite, which indicates t sub one of n and t sub two of n have the same order and therefore have the same time complexity. We can say the two algorithms have the same order of n squared and we can also write t sub one of n is big theta of t sub two of n both grow at the same rate. And we can also state that t sub one of n is big theta of n squared, and so is t sub two of n. And now let's look at a second example. Algorithms a sub one and a sub two grow at the size of the input n in accordance with these functions. f sub one of n equals five n plus three for a sub one, and f sub two of n equals eight natural log n for a sub two. Which one is the quicker algorithm? To compare the growth rates, we compute the limit as n approaches infinity of f sub one of n divided by f sub two of n. In this case though, notice as n approaches infinity, both the numerator and denominator approach infinity, which is an indeterminate form. This does not mean the limit doesn't exist. From here we can apply L'Hopital's rule in which we take the derivative of the numerator and denominator to help determine the limit. So in this case, the derivative of five n plus three is equal to five and the derivative of eight natural log n is equal to eight divided by n. Five divided by eight over n is equivalent to five times n over eight, which gives us the limit as n approaches infinity of five n divided by eight. In this form, the denominator is constant, the numerator is growing without bound, and therefore the limit is approaching infinity. This indicates the function in the numerator has a higher order. We can state the top linear function, or f sub one of n, is growing faster and the bottom natural log function of f sub two of n is growing slower. We can say f sub one of n is big omega of f sub two of n, indicating f sub two of n is a lower bound of f sub one of n. This tells us the algorithm a sub two is preferred because it has a lower order of complexity and is a quicker or faster algorithm. Before we go, let's look at this graphically. In red, we have the graph of f sub one of n. In blue, we have the graph of f sub two of n. By analyzing the graph, it's much more obvious that f sub two is the quicker algorithm. On the right, I've also included 
a growth ranking of function complexity in increasing order. You may find this helpful for future reference. I hope you found this helpful.